Folks, welcome to a special interview here on the No Ceilings NBA podcast feed. I am Maxwell Baumbach, and today I am joined uh, by one of the most interesting uh, prospects who is really starting to rise up boards later in the process here. He is a senior from Belmont. He is fully declared for the draft, 100% going in this year. Six foot six wing Ben Shepard hit 41% from three this past season, made Missouri Valley all defense team. A really well-rounded player who, if you're not familiar, because uh, he was under the radar for quite a bit, uh, he's definitely someone you're going to want to get to know. Uh, and you're going to have the chance to do it because he's joining me here today. Ben, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm happy to be here and uh, excited for this. So. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're glad to have you. So you are actually, this is actually our second time talking. I uh, did a series over the summer uh, covering under the radar players, and I got to interview Ben for that. Um, and now he's, now he's fully on the radar. He's a guy that, uh, you know, he's turning up in mock drafts like that had an awesome senior season. Uh, so we're going to get into that, but before, just to kind of get your background and things like that, uh, you did spend all four years at Belmont. Um, what was your recruiting process like in high school and what kind of led you to Belmont? Yeah. So, um, in high school recruiting was kind of slow, uh, <laughs> early on. I was short, uh, mm-hmm. didn't really bring that much to the table, but. I hit a growth spurt between my junior and senior year. Mm-hmm. And after that, my game started to change and people started to recognize what I could do. Um, had a couple Ivy League offers, had a couple of small mid-major offers. And uh, yeah, Coach Bird, once he got into my recruiting process, I was like, I think that's home. And mm-hmm. uh, Nashville being a beautiful city, I decided to commit. And then later he told me that he actually wouldn't be staying for <laughs> four years. So that was kind of... Mm-hmm. Yeah, wrenching, but I was still happy with my decision, and we got mm-hmm. Coach Alexander, and everything worked out. So, mm-hmm. and you so you mentioned that growth spurt. How tall were you like going into like your senior year of high school? Like, what are we talking about as far as that? Yeah, spurt? I was like six five going into my senior year. And okay, I'm six six now, so I kind of grew like an inch between mm-hmm. graduating and getting to Belmont. So nice, nice, and then. um kind of coming into the season so you you just had like a, a real steady development like you were one of those guys where it was just like year over year um you're kind of getting better adding elements to your game and then your junior year is when you really popped like junior year for me was the year where it was just like oh man like this he's he's gonna be a guy um so last season you had one of your bigger scoring seasons you scored 16.2 points per game and you really made a big leap as a shooter. You you hit 37.1% of your threes. And then this year, you kind of had your, your role change a little bit. So you guys had a really great table setting point guard your first couple years of school. And he's he graduated. So then it was just kind of like you were the guy now. Like you were going to be not only, you know, doing your shooting and your movement shooting and things like that. But you were also going to be setting the table a lot. And despite that, you actually improved as like a pull-up shooter in the mid-range. And then you also shot 41.5% from three. So even with that increased workload, you shot a higher percentage from three. Um, So could you just talk about what it was that helped you grow, not only as like a shooter, but just as a well-rounded all-around score these past two seasons? Yeah. um, Junior year, I kind of was able to put myself in that position of take like the pressure off of people like Nick Musinski and Grayson Murphy, people have been mm-hmm. uh, great players for this program. And uh, I was able to come in and help them and do my best. And I had a good year that year. But uh, this year I was given a bigger role, a different role than anything that I previously had at mm-hmm. Belmont. And um, I definitely had more on-ball responsibility. And I had to create for myself and others while uh, playing in a different way than I've been used to. So um, I think I grew as a passer and a mm-hmm. creator. And uh, just people were able to see different parts of my game that they haven't been able to see these past three years. So, Yeah. And the, the passing part that you mentioned is, is pretty interesting because I thought that was where you made a, a pretty sizable jump. Like there were flashes last season. Like it was part of the reason I liked your game was that, you know, he's a shooter, but there's some creativity, there's some passing and things like that. Um, how different was it to adjust to being like, I'm a guy who moves the ball kind of quickly. I occasionally in transition, make a nice pass to then being a guy who's like really in a position to, to do a lot of that table setting. What was that adjustment like? And, and what was your mentality as far as approaching that shift in role? Yeah, I never came off of a ball screen those uh, previous three years. And that, mm-hmm. that's something that I've been able to do this year. And uh, yeah, just getting comfortable with those uh, type of reads and plays. I feel like I was able to make some good plays, either if that was a skip pass or just a dish to my big man. And 
anything like that. We worked a lot on that in practice with me. So, uh, yeah, I was glad to see it come to fruition in, in the game. So, mm -hmm. And uh, something I think that is is interesting and that you deserve a lot of credit for is that um, even with sort of that increase in role, you still made the Missouri Valley all defensive team. Um, and when we spoke over the summer, like you lit up talking about defense, like you were really yeah. excited to talk about defense. Yeah. So um, could you just talk about like sort of your approach on defense and also what you think you do best on the defensive end of the floor? Yeah, uh, defense for me is where I get it started uh, during the games, um, bringing tenacity and energy and stuff like that. But um, this year, I felt like sometimes I was protecting myself in some sort of way. Okay. Because I had to bring so much on the offensive side. Yeah. I couldn't really afford to get into foul trouble this year, but um, mm -hmm. I still tried my best. And I feel like what I did this year was able to put me in that conversation for all defensive team, Missouri Valley, stuff like that. But um, I think that's something I do good on that side of the ball is um just being in gaps with my length mm -hmm. um off ball rebounding um and just being able to play smaller guards or bigger players just my versatility of who i can guard is really played in my favor so that's something i take pride in and uh mm -hmm. I definitely enjoy that side of the ball so for sure. So when you, like you mentioned, like, obviously it's, it's important for your team. To, and it's something I, when I interviewed Jake Stevens and I mentioned with him is like your, your role, when you do carry a big part of the offensive workload, like staying out of foul trouble is really important for your team. So how did you adjust to that, to still be an impactful defender? Is it a matter of just like focusing more on feet, not reaching as much? Like what type of adjustments did you make on that side of the ball? Is it just simply like gambling less or what, what specifically did you do to kind of remain effective in that role? Yeah, definitely not trying to gamble. Um, <laughs> I like to do that a lot. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, just making sure I'm staying in front, moving my feet, I'm keeping my hands away from my defender and uh, just staying in front. And I know that. Yeah. I do that and uh, I think that's what I try to focus on on mm -hmm. that. End, so. For sure. And that's that's a big, big, important skill. Um so we've we talked about a little bit of what you did this year, right? Like you you passed well, you shot really well, um, you created for others. Um heading into a point now where it's you know the, the college career is over, we're moving on to the professional ranks. Um, what do you kind of envision your role being on a professional team? Like what do you think you bring to the table for for NBA teams? Yeah, um, I would want to be someone who does all the little things for their team mm -hmm. um and affect the game, however I was asked. Um, I kind of see myself as a three and D guy, yeah. Um, someone who can affect the game by off ball movement, cutting, and defense while being able to shoot the ball. Mm -hmm. and, um, I also love winning, and um, <laughs> I, love creating, I love creating a positive mm -hmm. atmosphere with my teammates, and uh, yeah, just being just being a player in all mm -hmm. aspects that brings. So. Yeah, well, and I I think one thing that that I noticed on the film that I think is going to give you a pretty significant edge over a lot of people is the, like you mentioned, like there is a willingness to do all those little things that, that shows up. Um, but you are in very good, just physical shape. Like your work rate that you play with is really high. Like being able to defend at that level, moving hard off the ball on offense, moving consistently on offense. Um, how much of your like physical fitness do you think is a big advantage for you? And, is that something that's been a big focus for you over the years? Or is that just something that you've kind of always had, just being able to have that kind of cardio and, and pace to your game? Yeah, cardio and conditioning has been a huge part of what I do on the court. And um, it's just something that's always been with me, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, I work on it and I do a lot of stuff to stay in shape. But um, yeah, I think that me being able to play at a high level on both sides of the ball is going to be in my favor a lot of times. And um, yeah, just playing my hardest on both sides and uh yeah getting my team going so mm -hmm. so now we're we're kind of headed into this pre-draft process so what does a day in the life look like for you currently as you as you prepare for the nba draft yeah it's um working out on the court for two hours a day mm -hmm. and then strength and conditioning for an hour but uh some things i'm working on on the courts footwork learning nba terminology um balance whether that's finishing or shooting and stuff like that just little mm -hmm. things and um just strengthening already strength is part of my game so for sure for sure is there one 
element of your game that you've been really focused on or that you're excited that like when you go into a team workout, you can show like, Hey, look how far this skill has come or look how much I've improved in this area. Is there any one thing that you're like, man, I'm really proud of the work I'm doing here. Um, definitely shooting. Uh, really? Oh footwork. man. Okay. Different footwork, uh, different ways to get into my shot, stuff mm -hmm. like that. But, um, definitely in the live, the live events that we're going to be playing probably in those workouts. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to show defense and passing and stuff like that. Definitely mm -hmm. uh, been working on like decision making as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And with with the decision making, like what like uh, what elements of decision making have you kind of focus on? Is that just like timing with regard to passing? Is it passing versus shooting? Is it being able to make decisions at higher speeds? Like what have you been kind of focused on on that front? Yeah, like decision making. Um, once I get into the lane, awesome. Okay and stuff like that also off of screens um mm -hmm. setting screens stuff like that um off ball movement cutting just like mm -hmm. getting those timing down and stuff like that that's awesome that's awesome well uh you know we, we really appreciate you taking the time and, and joining us here um it's it's been a pleasure it was really exciting to just see see the growth that you made as a player this last season and, and we're really excited to kind of see you go through this uh this pre-draft process because every year we hear you know the teams are looking for length shooting and defense and i think that you're one of the more interesting prospects because uh coming from a mid-major background um people are just I, the mid-major guys rise late every year it feels like with the draft and you're kind of the guy this year where it feels like people are catching on to like oh man this guy's a good defender he's long he can really shoot so you're definitely one of the more interesting prospects out there so we we really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us and uh we're, we're glad to have you on and we're wishing you the best luck through the uh through the draft process here thank you i appreciate you guys having me on Awesome. And where can people find you on social media if they want to follow along with the, the journey? Um, so Instagram is at the at Ben L. Shepherd. Okay. And then Twitter is Shep Ben too. So awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, go give Ben a follow. Uh, thank you all for joining us. If you're not subscribed already, please do so on the No Ceilings NBA podcast feed. We also have daily written work on our Substack, stack, no ceilings NBA.com. So make sure you head over there as well. And as always, we appreciate you listening. Have a great day.